everyone, it's Rob here from Frontline Model Hobbies and today I've got another fantastic review, it's the 32nd Trumpeter Messerschmitt ME262 A2A so let's have a look in the box Right, let's have a look in the box, I'm not going to go around the box at all but you can see for yourself that the box art looks cool um, part number is 02236 if you really need to know um, instructions and stuff, I put them in the sealed bag just for myself, but you're not going to get it like that. And then the sprues, some of them are uh, individually bagged, the wings there, but the exception of the next one, the fuselage, and a few other bits and bobs in there. Then you've got two sprues in each for the engines, and you've got the clear parts of the engines as well. And then you've got weapons on the other sprue and cockpit and other you no know, sections, gun bays and stuff like that in the other. Then you've got a box, separate box that is. And then you've got your uh, clear parts in there. Some rubber tyres. Some uh, photo etched. And the uh, instrument panel. Uh, clear part and then on the side you've got some white metal landing gear which I'll personally use this time anyway so that being said give me a second and I'll uh, I'll zoom you in right, first I thought I'd show the uh, sprues and I'll pick out the main details so the surface detail on the kit is fantastic um, even though it is an old kit that being said um, it's not like the rest of the old trumpeter kits. The um, rivet detail and panel lines is very subtle all the way down. The only gripe I have got is you've got sink marks running along these sections here. Um, and you've got it on the other wing as well. I don't know if you can quite see that on camera. But on the other side, the main reason for this is the uh, rib detail. But it's not going to take you a lot to, to clean those sections up. The lower wing half is very much the same, with the exception of not having any sink marks. Centre section looks pretty good with some nice raised detail. And the opposite wing is the same as the opposite other side. The uh, other details, flaps and stuff, again very much the same. So that's that screw. The other sprue has got the fuselage and everything on and the fuselage detail again is very much the same. Very gloss over this as quick as I can. Again very good all the way down. The only thing you have got is you've got um, injection molding line going all the way down the back of the fuselage, the front of the fuselage and there. So that's the only problem you've got. Main wheel bay again looks pretty much the same as the real one and it doubles as the bottom of the cockpit. So yeah, very very nice. Um, one thing I've got to mention though is you've got two no sections. So you've got this section with the two cannons, the Mark 108 30mm cannons and then you've got another one later and I'll show you that in a second. So that's that sprue. Then you've got this one which comprises most of the uh, gun bay details so if you look at the real plane very much similar to the real one this is the rear bulkhead for the gun bay you work through front part bulkhead where the cannons stick through then and there um, bulkhead for the uh, main wheel but wheel well and then parts for the cockpit floor for the gun bay again looking really really nice and then you work your way around. This is the section in front of the gun bay uh, where the front landing gear will stick through there and it corresponds to that point there. And the front landing gear bay it's not overly special but there again would it be really like that on the real aircraft? Very much doubt it. So that's that sprue. Next sprue you've got all, all the little bits and bobs landing gear doors and stuff like that landing gear and you've got your wheels there. That's the other front section that I was talking about where the four cannons on this one stick through. 
Um, landing gear, wheels, yeah, rubber tyres, get resin ones, so much better. You've got ailerons on there, you've got your um, rear tails, some more wheels there, I'm working around. Strongly suggest, I did show you white metal landing gear, this is the two front, different types of front landing gear. I strongly recommend using the white metal, it's a lot stronger and less wobbly. Working way around. Details look pretty good. Um, the next two sprues are a duplicate pair, so you've got the engines and the uh, nacelles. So, talking about nacelles, you've got one solid and then one clear. The one clear is pretty clear, looks all right to me, uh, but the only problem is you've got ejection pin marks in there. Um, you do get all the radio equipment and everything in clear, just in case you lose it. Um, and then, like I said, you've got everything on there. Um, again, the details look pretty good. And they kind of fade out at the bottom, like old trumpeter does, but uh, it's not going to take you long to do the details on that. Then you've got two engines, obviously two nacelles. So I'll just do one, and yeah, the engines are broken up in a, a fair few parts, but that being said, if you cut off the nacelles in a way, and you have got cut lines there to show the front, and put some nice um, wires and stuff like that in there, they do detail up pretty cool, and I will show you later how they detail up. But that sprue is really nicely done. So, as I was talking earlier, you've got rubber tyres. Don't use them, get rid of them. Use resin ones. And you've got your white metal here, landing gear. Um, the white, white metal landing gear, generally use the front ones. The back ones are not too bad. But these are cast off the, as you can see from the ejection pin marks there, and the, the cast off the main uh, plastic landing gear, but still pretty good. Photo etched, don't use it. You can use it, but um, it's too thick, so annealing it is going to be a bit of a bugger. And you've got on the back side a clear section that you could light up if you're going to do a lighting up kit. Then, last but not least, you've got the clear sprues. The clear sprue is not perfect. Obviously, you're going to get some distortion and you've got some scratches on here. But that being said, it's it's not too bad. But there again, would the real one be as perfect? I don't think so. Instructions. I'm not going to go majorly on these, but what I am going to say, because I'm going to put these up later uh, at the end of the video, uh, so you can pause it at your own time. But these are very nicely detailed quite straightforward I won't follow them as perfectly like you put the engines on afterwards put the wings on first and sort out your details going through so the instructions are pretty quite clear so like I said I'll put them at the end so I have previously done a Messerschmitt 262 A1A version and there's a couple of areas I want to show you that might have trouble. Um, the first one is obviously the gear, uh, sorry, the um, gun doors are designed to be open. So you try and close them, they're going to be a nightmare to fit. The other doors are going to be a nightmare to fit is these underneath. I'm trying to hold it so I don't break it. But these doors here, don't know if you can see, but the panel lines are quite big. Um, they are big on the real aircraft, I have seen one at. Um, it's Cosford um, and yeah it's not brilliant um, the other area that I had a problem with is this back area and I think the join is there along that that section there and it's quite of a nightmare to, to sort out the other nightmare on the bottom is where this join is for the nacelles to the wing you can sort this out afterwards because obviously you want to get all this belly nice and get all that done afterwards the other area is the wing join. 
They were enjoying it too bad, it wasn't a major problem. But as you can see there, I've got it kind of all right on both sides. Other than that, the details for the kit are fantastic, especially an old kit. Obviously, you've got all the uh, all the throttles and everything in there. And then if I can try and spin it over without breaking it, that's the problem. Is you've got the detail wheel well in there. So pretty nice all the way around. So yeah, that is the review of the 262. Right, well that was the review of the ME262 A2A uh, by a trumpeter. And some of you might think, well you've not compared it to the Rebel one. And me personally, I don't want to do that because the main reason is I've not built it. Um, so with that being said, I've kind of glossed over this review. Um, and I mainly think that reviews are in conjunction with, yeah, the beginning part and also at the end when the kit's done and the final review should be done. So that's what I'm going to kind of do with this build. I am going to build it and I'm going to do it that way, I think. Um, so with that being said, me personally, I think the trumpeter offering is, well, it stands up in its own right against newer manufacturers and kits that are coming out now. The surface detail is fantastic for an older kit. And as you can see, it builds up very nice and it's quite a big model when it's done. So, like I said, I'm going to put the instructions at the end of this review so you can just pause them at any time you want. Um, so yeah, that is the review all done and dusted. So just want to say thank you for watching and I'll see you again very shortly.